Welcome to this first video in the video tutorial series for flower simulations. You are going to learn how to create super easily a flower app and how to run it again super easily using the flower run command. To create the flower app and execute it without having to write a single line of code. So let's see how to do that. But first, we'll see how you can create your Python environment. So for this, let me take this out of the way and I'm going to bring VS Code. So here I'm on my desktop. You see there is nothing. And in this integrated terminal, I have a simple Python environment that has nothing on it because I just created it. It's a Python environment based on Python 3.11. The minimum version for Flow is 3.9 but I recommend you using Python 3.11 if you can, or at the very least, uh, 3.10. So the first thing we're going to do is to install Flower. You can do that easily by doing pip install u to upgrade flwr. This will in install the latest version, which to the, at the time of recording this video is Flower 1.13.1. If you are seeing this video tutorial, series a bit later, well, try to install the latest version of Flower. If you see there is something not working as you would expect, as I show in the recordings here, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Slack. You can find the Slack channel linked in the QR code shown at the beginning of this video. So now that Flower is installed, uh, let me clear the terminal. We're going to create a new Flower app by using the command Flower new. And this is an interactive command that will walk you through a series of questions. But don't worry, these questions are very easy. And the final output will be your Flower app. So the first question is, what's the name of the app? I'm going to be here very original, and I'm going to call it my awesome app. Now, there are some restrictions of what type of symbols you can use in your name. But for the most part, you can use any string uh, pretty much. If there is some symbol that is not supported, you will be you will see a warning about it. The next question is: Please provide a flower username. You don't have to overthink this. Here you can write your name or anything you want. There will be an upcoming feature in Flower that will make use of this. And the last question asks you what template do you want to use. You can see there are a bunch of templates here, each of them using a different ML framework or data science framework, they all will generate an app that is fully functional, that you can run it right away. In this video tutorial series, we're going to use the PyTorch template. First, in this video, we are going to run it right away without making any modifications. And in subsequent videos, we're going to see how you can easily customize different parts of that template. The last two templates, very briefly, this is related to the our Flower LLM initiative. So if you're interested in running LLMs using Flower, this will generate you the LLM federated fine tuning pipeline. And if you are interested in contributing to the Flower framework, this final template shows you how you can create a template that is compliant with what's ex expected from uh, Flower baselines. But for this video, let's use the, the Python template. And here you will be presented with a series of instructions. You can run the app right away if you don't need to install the dependencies because maybe you are not starting from a new environment. But in this tutorial, we were starting from a new environment, so it makes sense to follow this, these steps instead and install our dependencies. Before I do so, you would have noticed that this new directory has been created, which has the name I gave to my app. And in here, very briefly, there is a minimal readme that tells you pretty much the same information as here. It tells you how to run the app, how to install it. There is a pyproject.toml that con contains some information. But what is particularly relevant now is it contains the dependencies for this template. And it also contains some other details that will be covered in the next video. It tells where the server app is and where the client app is. You can see that all the source code is embedded in a, into a second directory. 
And what this application does, it will federate the training of a simple CNN model for image classification, and it will be using, by default, the Cypher 10 dataset. In the next video, we'll see how we can change it, change this uh, very easily. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's follow these instructions to install the dependencies and run the app. So let's first go into my, the directory of my app. If you chose a different name for your app, probably this is going to be different. Now I'm going to install it. This will install all the dependencies. As I mentioned, in this case, we want to install, well, the simulation plugin for Flower. We're going to use Flower datasets, which is a super nice library that helps with the download and partitioning of a dataset. And then we're going to install Torch and Torch Vision. You are very welcome to upgrade this to a more recent version of Torch if you want, but it is really not needed for this tutorial. And now that the dependencies are installed, if you recall, the last part was to run the, the, the app. We can do that with flower run. And I do flower run dot just to indicate that this is the app I want to run because currently I'm in the directory where the pyproject.toml is. So the moment I do flower run, the flower simulation engine is kickstarting the process. It will do all the actions needed to get this going. It will download the dataset in case it is not available yet. It will partition it into as many clients or as many nodes are in this federation, which by the way, that information is is shown here. We will cover into more detail this, but this default federation uses 10 super nodes. You can think of super nodes as being just clients, but they are independent from each other. Each of them train a different part of the data set that they don't share with anyone else. They don't share it between themselves and they don't share it with the ser server app. As you saw, this app has finished running. Let me walk you through briefly on what this login means. So upon, do, upon doing Flower Run, the simulation starts. It shows some initial messages saying that the simulation is starting, that it will run for three rounds. And typically, a Flower Round is comprised of two steps, although this can be configured. One step for fit, which we'll see later in more detail what it does. It tells the clients, hey, this is the global model that we need to federate. The clients will receive it and do on-device training and a round of evaluation, which for the most part looks very similar to the fit round. Clients receive a global model, but instead of training it, they just evaluate it on their local validation set and provide the accuracy or the loss back to the server app. And by default, with this template code that is generated with Flower New, the application does three rounds of FL. And as we can see, the loss is going down after every round, which is generally a positive sign. Something is being learned. So this is the end of the first video to, in the tutorial series. In the next video, we will see how the client app and the server app we have created with Flower Neo, how do they look like? And we'll be providing more details on how you can change the model slightly. We will be replacing the data set and then we will, run in, we will be running the simulation again, customizing it, how it behaves at runtime. So see you in the next video.